Talking about block stack. We'll hold the first regulated token sale this morning. The SEC uh, cleared the $28 million offering under a regulation A, which is, you know, is an alternative uh, to an IPO. Joining us now is Blockstack uh, co founder and CEO Munib Ali, who also consults on Silicon Valley as well. Uh, yeah, th that was fun. Th that, that, uh, I have not seen it. You can talk yeah. to Mike about that. Mike, uh, Mike, enjoy that. Good stuff. Then again, I'm not in Silicon Valley, but I understand it's pretty. So pretty at 11, min, it's like an almost like an IPO, Mini. Right at, at 11 a.m., people could buy digital tokens. Yes. Uh, even though I hate that analogy, but some people uh, call it "quote unquote" the mini IPO. Right. And I think the significance here is imagine. Uh, the Wild West of equities markets before the 1933 securities regulations. Uh, and this is kind of like how the crypto markets are right now, right? And what we have done by working with the regulators is that we have, we have worked with them to define a legal framework so that there can be more transparency. And the U.S. public markets can open up to this new type of assets, the, the crypto assets. What exactly, in this case, with... with um Block stack. What does my digital token give me the right to do in the future? Or why is it worth something to me? So basically what you're buying is called a, a stacks token, and it's used as fuel on the network to register different type of digital assets, or if you're running smart contracts, uh, you need these stacks tokens to execute them. I think, let me, let me try to explain with an analogy. Uh, imagine that, you know, we as humans discovered Manhattan, the island, and one model is where a single company, let's call them Facebook, ends up getting all the property, and everyone can live there for free, but they don't have any property rights, right? So they don't have a vested stake in, in the success of, of whatever is happening. And in the block stacks case, every user has property rights. They have their own piece of land. They can own their own information. And whatever business activity happens, everyone has a financial upside there. There is no company in the middle. And so this is, you've built a decentralized network yes. that is yours, proprietary to... No, it's, no. it's open source code. Open source, so but it... It basically came out of research out of Princeton University. I did my PhD there. So we are, we are a couple of computer scientists who build the core technology as open source software. Okay. And people can run it to, to basically be a part of this network. Like, our company doesn't control this network And they can all. develop an app on your network, and you would pay for doing that with one of your digital tokens? Yes, so there are already, uh, I believe, 170 startups or applications that are already built on top of this network. And, and they include uh, uh, examples like alternatives to Google Docs, to Instagram, to Facebook, to LinkedIn, to OnePassword, and, and, and a whole list of these applications that are already live and people can start using them. That one person that they watch me, uh, they, it's like when the toddler taking its first, and they get, they're you, so you, proud. You got it. But they're yeah, so proud it. when they see that, that I, I'm sort of, uh, and, uh, let's talk, can we just move beyond this and just talk about whether Libra was a positive for crypto or negative? I mean, it's going to usher in possibly more regulation. It's not decentralized. Mark Zuckerberg is, you know, that's all I need is for him to, to have his hands in my wallet and, 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 you know, everything else. I'm not on Facebook, so he doesn't. But is, was it good or bad for the, the, this industry? I think overall it's, it's a good development. I'm cautiously optimistic in the sense that Facebook, the company, has done certain things in the past that would make you distrust the company, but this team is new. Um, I, I actually know the leadership team there. I think they have really good intentions, and they're trying to do the right thing. With that said, at some point, uh, Facebook would have to figure out that are they truly building an open system like Blockstack, or are they going to end up building a permission system like the current uh, state of things, and they will have to figure out uh, how to work with regulators as well. I don't see which, why which that... The, I, I, for me, that offsets any positive from, from making it more... Uh, more widespread. It just the it doesn't seem to have any of the key characteristics of, of a, a Bitcoin, for example, which is decentralized. I don't see how you regulate Bitcoin. That's the beauty of it. I, I, you can try, but you really can't because everybody sort of owns it themselves, right? They own their they own the rights to it. I mean, that's the point, right? Yeah, that's all right. Because you don't want there to be somebody saying fiat, let it be. 
So I, I feel like I feel some initial yeah, signs of a Bitcoin one. maximus in you and, and, and crypto it's, people it's, who just it's love really it. I'm moving from four to five. I'm not quite at the evangelist yet, although I understand that the function of what it allows you to do gives it a lot of inherent value, I think. Can I ask you about ICOs and this, the token sale? This is very important. This is the first SEC sanctioned token sale under Reg A+. A year ago, maybe you would have gone the ICO route, as so many other companies did. In the first quarter of last year, there was something like $7 billion in ICOs. Uh, in this quarter, it's, it's ground to a halt virtually, $118 million in the first quarter. So what... What made you choose this route, and do you think that this opens the way for other companies that would have other, otherwise looked to ICO do this through Reg A? Absolutely. So, uh, first of all, I hate that term, ICO. I try to avoid it as much as possible. Um, and, and effectively, we, so we've been, we've been in this market for more than five years. We've raised venture capital. Uh, we are, we're sufficiently funded. So we didn't need to go the quote-unquote ICO route just to raise capital. And plus, just by looking at the markets, uh, and, and there were so many bad actors there, misinformation, and people were basically effectively raising capital on half-baked ideas. Uh, that's when we started researching that if we were to do it professionally, uh, if we were to help mature the industry, what would that look like? Uh, that, that's when we uh, did the first part of our token offering through a Reg D offering that was limited to accredited investors. And, and large funds. So that was a 47 million round that we raised in 2017. And since then, we've been working on the legal framework for opening up such offerings to the general public. And that, as you can imagine, uh, takes, takes, takes a lot of time because you're working with the SEC. Uh, you need like audited financials and your auditors are sitting there looking at like, what is this thing and how do we understand it? And, and how do we actually get comfortable uh, with, uh, with, uh, with, with the regulated token offering like this. So this really helps the quote-unquote legitimate companies that would have gone through I the ICO route but might have been tarred by this sort of scammy nature of the ICO market. Absolutely. I, I definitely think so. I think the work that we have done uh, can serve as an example for other companies that are more professional and, and they don't want to otherwise go down the uh, ICO route.